how's it going guys? So the new trend nowadays is for kids to eat laundry detergent. So I figured I'd shoot a video in my kitchen quick and show you how to eat spark plugs. Just kidding. I just wanted to change the scenery up a little bit. So we're shooting this video in my kitchen today and we're gonna be talking about the basics of spark plugs. All right, so this is a typical spark plug. All plugs come in different shapes and sizes depending on what engine they're used for. This specific plug is out of a weed eater. So as for spark plug components, this right here is called the terminal. This is where the plug wire connects to and the other side of that plug wire goes to the ignition source such as a distributor cap. This right here is the insulator. Um, on a lot of spark plugs for vehicles, this insulator will have ribs on it and it'll be a lot longer as well. The insulator is generally made out of a sintered alumina, which is a very hard ceramic material and insulates the electrodes all the way to the point of where they're actually inside the engine. It's actually made out of this material because of its high melting point and durability. The next part here is the metal casing of the spark plug, also known as the jacket. This includes the threads that screw into the cylinder head, right there, as well as a washer to properly seal uh, the combustion chamber since it needs to withstand high heat and high pressure. Below that is the portion that actually sits inside the combustion chamber and contains your central and lateral electrodes. This is where the spark actually travels is between this gap right there. This gap is important because if it's too small, then there won't be enough of an arc between the two to ignite the fuel and air mixture inside the combustion chamber. And if this gap is too wide, then the arc won't be able to travel through that distance at all, and it won't create any spark. All plugs have a specific gap that they're set to. To test this gap, uh, you can use a gap gauge, and it's basically a simple feeler gauge. Spark plugs can tell you a lot about how the engine is running just by looking at them. By doing a simple Google search, or better yet, by using a Haynes manual, you can diagnose your spark plugs to see what they're telling you about your engine. It's pretty cool. One thing to point out also is most manufacturers say that you should change your spark plugs every 100,000 miles. And even if they look like this after 100,000 miles, I usually change them a little bit sooner than that because even at 80,000 miles, the plugs are still four-fifths of the way gone. So just something to think about. One last thing to remember when you're changing out your spark plugs during your regular tune-ups is that you want to get the right heat range spark plugs. Uh, heat range doesn't necessarily mean the amount of electrical energy that the spark plugs put out, but it's more of the thermal performance of the spark plug which will make sure that your engine uh, runs better and ignites the fuel air mixture properly and the plugs won't foul out prematurely or pre-ignite. So I hope you liked the video. If you learned something, please give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to Midwest Garage if you haven't already. I have a ton of new content coming out every week, including new 101 videos, as well as a couple projects that I'm currently working on. Next week's 101 video is gonna be all about jet fuel. So see you there.